Welcome back to Pro Shop. In this video, I want to take you through hopefully the last of the modifications I have to do before this HR Ute leaves for paint. One thing that happened while this car was at the owner's shop was it was sitting there without the windows in it. More importantly, it didn't have the quarter windows fitted and the owner quite liked the look of the car without them. So it's back here to have one piece glass fitted along with power windows. Firstly, I had to make sure it was even possible. Anything is possible, but is it worth it? Meaning, will the cost outweigh the reward? So instead of cutting up the original doors, an old rusty door was found and I had to go at modifying that one first. I removed the outer skin to reveal the inside of the hinge pocket and cut it right back to the hinge. That way I could bring the window channel as far forward as possible and only have a small corner panel to fill in. Once I cut the original window channel down, I tacked it in place, making sure it was square to the opposite channel, then I could start making a template for the glass. I made a template from Alley Panel. This stuff has many names, sign span, composite panel. It's basically a layer of plastic sandwiched between two thin sheets of aluminium. It's extremely versatile, shapes easy and can actually be cut with a Stanley knife. Now that I had the template in the window channel and sliding freely up and down, I could start fitting the power window regulators. This is just a simple universal kit that I trimmed to length and bolted in place. I rigged up a momentary dual way switch that plugs on top of a 12 volt battery to power the windows so I could run them up and down and make sure they didn't bind or come out of the track. Now that I knew it could be done, I could start on the real doors. I modified the front window channel to make it bolt in, that way it was going to be easier when assembling to put the glass in. Where the power window regulator needed to sit, it was right in the way of the inside door handle, so now I had to relocate it. I cut out the recess and used that section to make a panel to patch back in the hole. Once that was complete, I positioned the handle where I thought I needed it to be and went about cutting it in. After that was done, all I had to do was extend the rod that connected the handle to the lock. After welding it and a finishing sand, I could finally fit the regulator and run it. With the templates done, I can have them sent out to get the custom glass made while the car is at paint. The only thing left to do now is drill some holes for the wires to run through. Now, I fitted the air conditioning evaporator unit up under the dash a while ago, and the only thing left to do was fit the vents. 
After searching online for all sorts of vents, nothing seemed to suit this build, so it was decided we had to make them. I started by swaging a line into a small sheet of steel, then folded a return on it. Next, I marked it and cut it into small lengths. I made a wooden buck that was going to be the size of the vent I wanted, then clamped the pieces around it. Finally, I tacked it together, then digged it up. I then cut slits into the buck and sat some 3mm flat bar and welded them in place. These would become the louvers. After the louvers were welded in, I could box in the back of the vents and tack on the oval tube that will connect to the ducting. Now that they were complete, all I had to do was fit them into the dash and console. Because I mounted the evaporator up as high as possible under the dash so as not to see too much of it hanging down, I now had to remove some of the inner skin of the cow so the ducting would have clearance to run to the vents. I also welded up the demister vents on the top side of the dash and made a plenum underneath that the ducting could hook up to. With a few holes in the top of the dash and now there is a working demister. With this car now having AC, I've decided to weld up the air intakes on the cow. Even though I know this car will be well looked after, these cows often rust out if the drains get blocked, so I thought that wouldn't happen if it was sealed up. There were a couple of little problems that needed to be addressed before welding it up. There is a guard nut that sits inside which I had to cage in so it could still be adjustable. Also, the washer jets run through the cowl, so after it was welded and sanded, I drilled a small hole where I could feed the washers through and out the hole in the engine bay. Another little detail that the owner wanted was to get rid of the original tailgate stay and upgrade to something a bit better than just a standard cable. They tend to rattle around and can scratch the paint, so I fitted a stay from a later model Holden Ute. This wasn't just an easy switch. 
a lot of modifications were needed just to accommodate the stay when the tailgate was closed. I needed to square out the corners of the tray, which I found an old wasp nest behind one of them. Then I had to move over the edge of the tailgate and weld on the pivot point. Finally, I had to lengthen the stay arms so the tailgate would lie flat when opened. The finishing touch to the front end is the grill. Now right at the beginning of the build, the owner had some renderings done and since then I've been trying to replicate them to the best of my ability. In the design, the blinkers were deleted and the louvers ran right across. This is an old trick where if you can source a few spare grills by removing the top and bottom louvers, which are the longest, you can fit them to one grill and then delete the blinker hole. I then used another spare center section and chopped it up and added it to the original one. I did try to weld it together but just couldn't get it to weld properly. Not sure if these sections are made of magnesium, but for now I just glued it together and we can either paint it, have it cast, or machine one out of billet. So that's it for this video. In the next video of this HR series, I'll do a walk around of the car and point out some of the good things and bad things that happen while building this car before I strip it all down and send it off for paint. This has been one of my favourite cars to build so far and I just want to take the time to thank everyone for the support we are getting for sharing it here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.